Hi guys and welcome to another video of Vibing with Via. I hope everybody had a good week. You know, it's Friday, it's a laid back kind of vibe. It is still COVID um, season and uh, of such. You know, everybody knows that the vibe really is to stay home and chill. So what better way to spend a Friday than just basically vibing with y'all about something that I find um, that is affecting so many women, something that I too have suffered with and something that is very near and dear to my heart and something that I think that as individuals we need to speak up about a little bit more because by sharing our individual stories, of course, we can be helping other women who might be silent sufferers, all right? And also encouraging them too to speak up because speaking up might very well be their therapy. So what am I talking about today? I am talking about this um, condition that affects women, women only. Today, that's what the research says, it affects women. And this is called PCOS or PCOS as some persons refer to it. The correct terminology, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So I know a lot of persons are going to be asking what is PCOS? It is the condition from hell. Every woman's nightmare, one of, one of the nightmares that women face, right? So um, my own story with uh, PCOS, or rather my own journey, started off when I was a young adult. I remember that I was probably age 19 or 20. I was going to travel to Florida. That was my annual trip. I would take a trip to Florida. And um, this time around, I wanted to make sure that my period would just not show up to ruin my trip because from the very first day i had a period it was rough i remember my very first day it was a thursday many many moons ago i won't tell you how long ago because i know that some persons are sitting here let me calculate her age anyway it's not like i have a big issue about my age but that's not what we're talking about today and so i remember coming home and saying to my mother oh my god mommy i have this awful belly ache it's like I can't control myself I don't know what's going on I don't want to use the bathroom but there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of cramping and everything anyway it's customary though for me to um, come in and then pass urine uh, once I get home that's always one of the first things I do I wash my hands I get into that bathroom and I urinate I don't know why I program myself to do that because I wasn't really a fan of using like public restrooms so maybe that's why you know I was giving myself bladder issues too unknowingly so I went to the bathroom and interestingly enough, when I wiped, <gasps> mommy, ball out, load, 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 she came running because at this point she was wondering what was going on because the first thing I did was to complain about this pain that I was feeling. I said, I think I'm dying. I think I'm dying, mommy, because guess what? I wiped and in wiping, I saw blood. My mother smiled and in that moment, she had to give me the little thought now for me to understand that, no girl, you're not dying. You're just nicely becoming a young lady. It's here, it's that time, it's a period. Now, for me, I really knew what a period was because my mother didn't hide anything from me as it relates to the whole business of menstruation and what sanitary napkins were like and how they were to be used. I was fortunate enough to have that kind of a relationship with my mother, so I was mindful of that process. Also, I remember that when I learned about um, the, the the parts of a vagina when i learned about penis when i learned about puberty my father was the one who had bought me a novel called not a novel well is it a novel maybe i don't know a book because i don't know why i get in technical with the terms but he had bought me a book called the complete tween and he had me read the book and then he wanted to find out whether or not i understood what was going on for some persons this might be okay weird <laughs> why would her father need to buy her that but my daddy and i were always cool and um at the end of the day you know i've never felt i was never ever raised to believe that there is anything that is off limits that i couldn't talk to him about and so it wasn't awkward in fact after reading the book as a little girl you know i jump up with daddy and you know what happened when the vagina does this and if the penis does this and it was like me telling a story it was okay but i think for him it was more about me understanding what was happening because any minute now it could have been my time so i was well prepared in terms of knowing the do's and the don'ts once i started menstruating 
But what I was not prepared for was the pain that would have accompanied it, especially on the very first day, right? So I wasn't thinking it was my period. I wasn't thinking that this was the time and this was the day because I mean, hello, I started menstruating before a lot of other females in my age group. So I really thought I was dying in that moment. So mommy cleared that up for me. Anyway, um, going through school, prep school, oh Lord have mercy. May God bless my teacher soul. I had it rough. When I say rough, I mean rough, heavy periods, bad periods. I was sick. But you know, interestingly enough, nobody else in the class knew that I was going through this because I'm a warrior. So I'd be there and I'd be in pain. A whole lot of pain, but I was sucking that up because my job here was to pass my common entrance and go to whichever school I was going to be choosing. All right. So I had to go through that. And my teachers, my teachers, though, my brown owl and also my subject teacher, my classroom teacher, not subject, my classroom teacher, she was very supportive of this process for me and had a lot of conversation with me about it as well. And I'm forever grateful and thankful about what I was experiencing. Now, um, fast forward now to high school <laughs> that's when it really got bad that's when it became unbearable but that's also the time that a lot of my friends didn't even know that I was suffering silently because here it is that I had this period from hell here it is that I had this thing that was eating me alive and I just didn't know how to deal with it I remember having a few guys as friends who were very supportive though um, one well he's an only child and uh, you know he lived with his mom and I guess he would see his mother going through whatever pain and so oftentimes he would take the time to help her out when she was in that mode and perhaps go buy some pad and stuff for her so my friend and may his soul rest in peace because he died in a car crash and to date I haven't really you know dealt with it on a, on a certain level because I felt like you know this is something that shouldn't have happened so one can just imagine how I felt knowing that my friend was taken away from me but anyway back to the point that I'm making um, the situation is as such that um, I was going through this going through this going through this and it was rough oftentimes when we had swimming for PE I wasn't swimming I think at one point in time a PE teacher uh, she was a little bit aggressive one-off I think she felt as though I always had an excuse when it was coming down to swimming little did she know that I was never exposed to the use of let's say tampons the pain was too great the flow was too heavy I was uncomfortable psychologically it was affecting me emotionally it was affecting me and so telling me that I would be swimming getting in some swimsuit and swimming while I'm menstruating that's a no-no but it was another twist to this thing I had lengthy periods periods that just would not go away longer than a four day five day three day longer than seven days God bless when it stopped there were moments when that happened and I couldn't understand it you know my mother herself couldn't understand it at that time I don't even think my mother thought oh this might have been hormonal or this might be um, a reproductive issue I don't think my mother thought about that but she knew that I needed to get help and so she took me to the doctor I think somebody had said to her that there was a gynecologist that could be found at not all at the time and so I was supposed to be taken there and I went hmm. this is another part of the puzzle of course I was very young I was not sexually active um, I was young I was not sexually active as I said before and so that doctor was not even concerned about getting a speculum and opening up that vagina so that she could take a look at my cervix she wasn't interested in examining me in that way and she stated it openly right in front of me that i was too young to go through that kind of situation perhaps i don't know the fear might have been that i would have been traumatized which i probably would have been because i'm afraid of pain as well as maybe it's because that hymen would have been broken I, I'm just not sure what was her reasons definitively for not going that route she didn't even order for an ultrasound for me but what she did do was to suggest that my mother got me some herbs and the, the brand that she recommended I remember this was Herbalife no at that time Herbalife was not readily available in Jamaica you had to get that from overseas and it was extremely expensive when we say expensive I mean expensive but I oftentimes wondered why should 
my parents have to go through spending so much money for me taking these things anyway they made a sacrifice and i got these products and can i tell you lord have mercy i figured they were just a little bit too strong for me i don't know something about the dosage wasn't working out with me at all and so i tried to take it and then i started getting headache i started feeling bloated i started feeling sick and i just said mommy i cannot do this absolutely cannot i cannot do this i'd rather just live with whatever this is that, that that i'm facing because i can't deal with the feeling that i'm getting dealing with this and i had to struggle you know my i remember my grandmother sending me like a hot water bag and every little thing that they would do in england for girls who apparently suffered from bad periods my grandmother showed up for me in more ways than one and you know made sure that i was comfortable as best as possible but this thing, as I said, it's a monster. When I say monster, I mean monster, 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 monster. This thing is Satan wife, okay? Because I remember having even my period gone overseas for a performance. And I remember after getting off the stage and, um, you know, the performance was good and everything and everybody in an upbeat mood. Finally, we had a tour. This was now done. And we were going to go and do some shopping. And when everybody else in the, in the, in the um, group was able to go and shop, boom. I dropped down on the roadside in a foreign land. Yes, man, dropped all the way down. Knock out. I remember that same friend. He was by my side, you know. And interestingly, I had a female best friend, but she wasn't there. She was busy shopping. But he was by my side. And um, huh, some person saw me on the ground. I guess he sounded the alarm that I needed help. You know, help, help, help. Something has gone wrong with a friend of mine. And all of that and persons came there were some jamaicans they took me up they brought me to the back of this store he never left my side because when i woke up and i saw these strange people and i recognized i was in a strange place i just never understood like what's going on why am i here and they explained to me that i blocked out you know so i guess they did the whole smelling salt story and everything revived me and i came around and they're like how are you feeling and i just simply said tired i felt exhausted but most importantly, I was in pain, a lot of cramping. I needed to get home. I needed to regroup with the others and then, you know, wait for the transportation to get home. I needed to take a shower. I needed to just clean myself up. I just needed to do all of this. I remember he even saying to me, um, can you manage to bathe? Because I'll come and bathe. And I'm thinking, huh? First of all, you're a boy. You're not going to be seeing me naked. Second of all, um, this is menstruation. Like, this is blood. Like, how could he even think of offering to, to to give me a shower no man i'll fight that out my real tongues no fight that out but really actually had a big heart and it says a lot because at the end of the day you know he wasn't concerned with oh am i gonna get to see her he was listen man the love between me and i really 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 the love between us real when he died i wept you know another bible them said jesus wept that was me i cried like legit cry my eyes out because let me tell you man it's sweet soul that he was anyway um i'd gone through that you know gone through moments like that just walking and my foot just gave away my body cramp up and i just can't go i've had those moments as well and it was horrible so when i got to early adulthood now <laughs> as i said to you i was going to be traveling and um I decided that look based on what I see on the chart my period is supposed to come and I am not about this life and I don't know it's like the period said to me oh yeah watch me are you the period didn't come at the time that it was supposed to come you know it came before days in advance of me taking the trip so I get fixed and I say well I will counteract this thing because here what them say if you want to get rid of this stuff there are ways around it and one big way is to take birth control so now i'm gonna control this thing my introduction to the pill i didn't do it on my own by just walking into um the pharmacy and ordering a birth control because i understood fully well that when it comes to birth control you're really dealing with hormones and that's not something to play with you know so i remember going to the doctor now and i said well listen to me doc <sighs> wasn't even my regular doctor he was sitting in and i said listen to me doc i have a flight to catch in this upcoming week i am going to florida i'm going to have a swell time in florida i am planning to live it up loud and there is no power no principality or period that is going to stop me from taking that plane and having a wonderful time 
So here's the thing. I need something to kind of curb all of what's going on. He says, okay, um, birth control, that should do it. And he gave me the direction, take two, whenever, then take one, and all of the drama in terms of how I was supposed to take it. I was so happy. I ran to the pharmacy. I made my purchase. I'm good, you know, because, ooh, Marshall combat on them period, yeah, because I'm not about this life. <laughs> the first pill I popped, the first pill that I popped, I don't even think I'd swallowed it good enough. What was I faced with? A period. And so I followed the instruction of the doctor, thinking that that would now just, you know, kind of dry it up and send it back to the pit of hell. It would rise up like a phoenix, man, and give me everything I was looking for. I mean, on the day in question that I was going to catch the flight, I was so nervous. I was so worried. I know the pain. I know the drama. I know everything that I have to endure when my period is on, you know. So, I'm going through the airport and then there's a lot of mercy. And one of them are going to hassle me. One of them are going to take drugs me I carry. I started thinking the worst. You see, a mindset. A mindset is a hell of a thing. I thought about everything that was negative because deep down I was of the opinion that I would have been walking funny through that airport because of the pain that I was feeling and the cramping and the pressure and um, I went through I never wanted 40 minutes or one or however long it takes to get to um, Miami I, I, to Fort Lauderdale rather I, I mean but you just want the time for hurry up and go on because I wasn't prepared to deal with this I wasn't prepared to face this and I got there but I was sick when I got picked up at the airport, I remember the person picking me up, who was my then boyfriend, by the way. He was like, um, you don't look good. What's going on? And I was explaining. I said, why? You know, I don't know if it's the pills that the doctor gave me or what, but I'm not doing too good. And I want to tell you that for the entire time that I stayed in Florida, I was in agony. I think I stayed there like a week, a week and change. I couldn't go anywhere. I was just home, I was in bed, the most I did was to take a shower, and he brought all my meals to me. It, it's just like how you say, oh, Corona, go on, and people put in isolation. That's exactly how I felt. I wasn't able to enjoy that trip at all. I wasn't able to go out. Everybody knew that I'm a street tete. I just wasn't able to enjoy myself. And coming back home, I had to carry it back home, you know, because it never finished within that week, and that was another thing, because it would sometimes go... Um, beyond the three to seven day mark coming back home I worried again I said Lord are they gonna have an issue here at the airport you know that was another concern will there be an issue am I going to be walking funny because when the clotting is taking place and the pressure is coming on ladies you can identify you know nice it just not pretty you can identify with that so I worried and I came home and after I came home I went back to the doctor and I said something has to be wrong because the remedy that you give me never work is it that my body wasn't used to it and everything and then he suggested that um you know maybe i need to be on it for a longer time period and you know what's going on so he started asking questions though what's going on how long has this been going on i said boy this is the situation so he says okay well, let's just see maybe it's a little bit of hormone imbalance that was just to put it mildly i saw the same doctor not my legitimate doctor now says maybe it's just a little bit of hormone imbalance so i'm gonna continue giving you this pill and you will take it for x time and then we'll see what happens let's see if it will settle down oh settle who not a settle down when we say it rise up now all of the other falling angels then will it down a hell and come for me because i should not have troubled it not only was that happening i recognized that in taking the particular brand pill that i was given I never normally eat certain I was eating a lot of wheat that was one of the things because I figured that wheat was just healthy this is what I should eat right you know the wheat phase that's where I was and the soy phase that was where I was little did I know that there was something else happening in my body which would have led to me um, being further affected by consuming these products I had no idea so I was just going through on my diet and I'm saying to myself I don't understand why am I gaining all this weight I watch myself move from this to this to this to this to this and I can't understand it why am I gaining weight I am not eating anything out of the norm I am not a junk food tete I'm not a sweet tooth person like what's going on 
started to do my own reading and then I started seeing that birth control can cause you to gain weight but at the same time you know my skin well I never really had a lot of acne and everything but my skin was looking good so I was a fat looking good girl <laughs> I was just fat and cute that's really what it was probably still fat and cute but um I was concerned about the gaining of the weight not because I was fat that was the least of my problem but I was concerned that I was gaining the weight and I wanted to know what was causing me to gain the weight. I think that was the most important thing. What has led to this? Because I was packing on the pounds, you know, and I was packing on the pounds quickly. When you look at my face and you saw my cheeks, I said, no man, I can't handle this. So I got up one day and I said, this thing is making me sick and I just stopped taking it. Go oh, again, I decided to try another doctor. In fact, I tried several doctors and everybody told me the same thing, oh, birth control until finally i went to one doctor and the doctor again is a specialist you know a gynecologist and the doctor says you know what i think i'm gonna send you to do a battery of tests no when i hear that you know so be nervous because anybody know me knows so i don't like doctor and i don't like i'm not afraid of taking an injection but we can't bother come here forgot bamboozle the nurse and be like oh, tell me when to do this oh, tell me when. I have to be able to crazy enough to cycle myself to receive it so I am not a big fan of you know that kind of a thing anyway it so happened that um, I had to go and do these tests do an ultrasound do some blood work I guess they were testing for the hormone levels and ultrasound was to see what was happening in that area I even went as far as getting a test done now to look at uh, my fallopian tubes all of these things come back and say everything all right the only thing that it revealed was that one I had PCOS and two that um, I had a bit of hormone imbalance so that is how I knew which type of PCOS I had but let me tell you this it's just no in recent years like 2019 2020 that I discovered that there were types of PCOS so even after being diagnosed with PCOS I just figured okay PCOS was just this general thing not knowing that there were different um, types of PCOS that would affect individuals and I think in another video I may talk about the different types or better yet you can go and google it I don't even know if google has a lot of details in terms of distinguishing the types but if you read extensively you will find it and um, after that I was just now on a journey until I was just given metformin to take and the story continues taking metformin I started saying but I'm not a diabetic why am I being given this thing same story I started to be sick again so if I'm taking something and I'm feeling sick, I'm not going to take it. So I fling them away. And every time I went back to the doctor, I am going to prescribe some more metformin for you. You actually need to take it because, you know, this is what the research says. And they went on and on and on about why I needed to take this thing. And the more I took this thing was the more I knew that I could not be doing the right thing because I am not. I can't sick and then me I feel sicker, if that's a word. I'm, I'm feeling more sick after taking what you are giving me as a medication to um, heal me it just never made sense to me and I tried a number of different um, avenues after that which was alternative medicine so I went and um, there was a lady who was overseas she came to Jamaica probably mm, a few months for the year and one day I was in the health store and I saw this lady and she was asking for some things and I looked at her and I said lady Excuse me, I don't mean to pry in your personal business, but I'm looking at you and I'm looking at your neck and I recognize that you have a little dark spot there on your neck and I can see that you have some discoloration in your face. And I was just looking at your body type, but your abdomen area looks a little bit bloated and all this. But question, do you have PCOS? She's like, oh my God, you mean somebody else knows about this thing? I was like, well, yes, the doctor said I have PCOS and I just want to know the things that you're asking for. How is it that you're asking for these things? Why you know is it to treat this thing? And she's like, yes. And she gave me the hook up to this lady and my best friend and I were on the road I didn't even wait two seconds popped up my phone on her car and I said look I need help and she started talking to me about how this thing worked I started following exactly what she was saying and can I tell you immediately I started to feel better in myself and I started to see results but again the products that she had me take 
were only available at the time at Ligony Drug and Garden Store and it was really about a first come first serve basis because she wasn't necessarily sending them to Jamaica in great volumes and so there were other clients that she had and they had to go forth and they had to get these medications as well so it's like sometimes by the time I'd call in to say do you have X and Y they'd be like no we're out of it whatever so that in itself was not sustainable because I couldn't keep up with this regime so I felt like I was always getting back to square one until I'm at work one day, another co-worker, male now, had an issue and uh, you know he thought he would have been on death's door and um, heard about a doctor that he decided he was going to try and he came back and he returned from death's door. I said, well, what I have, I have a condition, granted I'm female, but this condition feels like death's door, so why not? Give me the hookup for the doctor. I went and I didn't explain what was going on to this doctor. I just um, went in there. He said he was going to be doing some detox for me, a foot detox. And I did this foot detox and voila, the man sat there and he told me things about myself. I was astonished. I wondered for a second if this is the kind of thing you see in the movie when people talk about um, psychic powers. I wondered about, you know, um, Dr. Cleo. Is it Dr. Cleo that used to come on radio or television? Or Dr. Safa. I think it was Dr. Safa, Miss Cleo, or whatever. I started even have self doubt, like, who are you though? How comes you know these things? I never tell you anything about me. But you were able to detect this. The person who gave me the referral, he did not know what the condition was. He just knew that I wanted to see whoever this doctor is that he went to. And oh my God, the greatest relief that I had in the history of my um, reproductive years came at that point. And I was going through. It was very expensive, but I had to go through. I did what I had to do until it came down to the taking of the products that he had. Mighty God of Daniel. You know when you're reading in the Bible how Jesus was given the vinegar to drink? And you know how vinegar smell, right? And you know that a lot of the things that you smell, you actually taste. So you understand that this is some awful rotted. Oh, can I say rotted and on, on, on black? Well, alright. If I can say rotted, rotted. Yeah? When I started taking these things, stomach couldn't manage it. I threw up. But the side notes, I'm going to find a way to cheat the system because I'm going to win at this. But I needed to find um, a counteraction to the doctor's remedy. So one of the things that I love is that the doctor had every single thing listed on it in terms of the products that were in his, um, the ingredients rather, that were in his product. And so I said, well, I go into the health store and I'm going to ask for X and Y and Z and everything that's listed there, I'm going to take them and take them individually. And I did just that. And remarkable things were happening for me. Happiest time of my life. And every time I wake back, he says, you're doing good. I say, yes, doctor, motivation now was fighting that fight but you know what is my biggest issue in this life to be disciplined just to be disciplined especially as it relates to my health because I'm such a foodie I love to cook and you will see that at some point in time in this uh, vlog that that's a thing that I like but love to cook you know so um, I love to just eat whatever it is that I want to eat so he gave me a strict diet that I was supposed to follow I did that as best as possible I had a lot of support from my mom I had a lot of support from my friends we started this whole thing and I've been on that journey fallen from grace in terms of that peacock's journey grace many times and I've started over but I'm happy to report that um, once again I'm at that stage where I'm working on it and I've been following this blood type diet and that's another video because I'm almost at my 30 minutes mark wow this was long but um you know just coming out of this PCOS journey and the next time I do a part two to this video I want to talk about how I started doing the blood type diet and how that impacted my life and I also want to talk about the moment that I met Ramona Riley Cosmic Woman and how those individuals at Cosmic Woman have helped me along this journey I really want to talk about that so this video is very long I kid you not for the first video that I'm talking about something health related it's really long but um I hope somebody would have learned something here I hope at the end of the day persons might get an idea as to the struggle that us females go through it's not our fault we didn't pick this we didn't choose this it just happens you know it's a part of life everybody has a struggle and you just have to pick everybody has multiple struggles rather and you just have to pick one one at a time that you want to combat so um, I will do a part two to this video to talk about what has happened since then I want to talk about again um, my following up blood type diet and I also want to talk about the journey that I've been having since um, 
making contact with Cosmic Woman. All right, everybody, I thank you so much for your patience for going through this, to listening to this, to hearing my story. I thanks for your support on this venture. And guess what? I'm just inviting you to like this content, to share this content, and even to comment down below if you are a survivor of polycystic ovarian syndrome or any other reproductive issues that might be affecting you. And let me know what your journey has been like. Let me know what treatment plans you have been using because you know what? At the end of the day, the more we talk up about this and speak out about it, it's a better position that we're in to help our sister. Who is also struggling all right guys so thank you so much for joining me and i will see you in my next video